Subcanergy Press is uh, with me right here at the table, fund manager, UK Dion Investment Limited. Subkene, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Nice I, I can see this is your smile, so it's going to be a good day. <laughs> you know, when you have like investment bankers around. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we're happy to be here so we can discuss yeah, so things and break them down for no. people. Yes. Well, welcome to the show. Thank Let's you. get started. Let's take a look at this, uh, the equities market. We've seen, okay. you know, the transition, the journey from 2019 till 2020. 2020, when the whole world was still suffering from a pandemic. In yes. fact, New Zealand, was early today, has imposed a national, national lockdown, a nationwide lockdown okay. because of the pandemic over one single person. You know, so Jason Tadin, the, the prime minister, is taking so much proactive measures. What am I saying in essence? The globe is still suffering from the pandemic. Yes. The Nigerian equity space, uh, equities market did so fantastically well. It did. You it know? did. Among the best. I think the third or the, or the best, I it guess. It was the highest performing. Yes, it was the highest performing. About 50% yes. returns. You know, I was like, what's happening? When we're on the lockdown, so that means there's money, oh. <laughs> People are saying there's no money, there's money. So just take us through that, you know, through that transition from even 2019 when the CBN, uh, you know, went hard on, you know, no treasury bills for retail yes, investors and yes, all of us. Yes. So it's like all the monies. Yes. So just take us through that transition. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's very, I won't say very simple, but it's all connected, really, starting from, let's say, late 2019. But I want to look at this year first before I take us back. So January of this year, you know, the, the bullish sentiment of the equity market carried on from 2020 up until 2021. So the first month of this year, the equity market was still going up and everybody was happy. But by, but by February and March, things started going downward and, you know, people were trying to figure out why. And there were a few factors that, that caused that to happen. One being people who invested in 2020 they decided to realize the cap um, profits, you know, the capital gains that their investments had made. So they were selling off um, the stocks in their portfolios. This is, you know, in simple economic terms, is an increase of supply. Mm -hmm. And once you keep demand stable, but you increase supply, then prices are going to come down. And this is exactly what happened in the equity markets. Also, you had uh, companies paying out dividends from, um, from 2020. They paid out their dividends in March. And this, you know, caused the, the market to readjust their prices because those dividends had been paid out. But I feel like the largest and biggest thing that had an effect on the equity market was activity in the fixed income market, right? So now if we go back What's to... the fixed income market? Sorry. So the fixed income market, uh, we're, talking about, <laughs> we're talking about treasury bills mm -hmm. and bonds, bonds yeah. mostly, you know. Now, because of the nature of our economy, the treasury bills markets, the short-term fixed income market is where a lot of activity happens and it's used as an indicator of the short-term activity in the country. So, if you go back to the end of 2019, um, things, the, the, the CBN decided that they wanted to do their part in stimulating the Nigerian economy by increasing private sector activity. How do they want to go about this? They wanted to increase lending in the private sector, and the best way to do that is by reducing the rates, the interest rates that, that they have to pay back money that they borrow. You know, Because once people feel that they are able to cover the interest payments on their loans, then they are likely to take more. How did they go about doing this? They restricted people from the OMO markets. As we all know, the Treasury bills market is split into two. The open operation um, market, which is bills issued by the CBN, and then the NTB markets, which is bills issued by the Debt Management Office. So CBN restricted access to the OMO bills completely. That's open market operation. Open market operation. Uh, yes. Not that detergent, so <laughs> <laughs> we just need to. Then the NTB. Yes. Uh, the Nigerian, Nigerian Treasury, Treasury, bills, Treasury yes. bills. That's NTB. So whenever you hear me say that, that's what this stands for. Yes. So the CBN restricted access to the open market operations bills for only foreign investors and institutional investors. So all the demand that was previously there was pushed onto NTB. And with the NTB, now the supply was the same, but the, de the demand was much higher, which pushed up the price. And the pushing up the price means yield is low. So returns on treasury bills 
started crashing from end of 2019, carrying on into 2020. And this just kept on going. If you, if, you, if you look at the yield trend for the Treasury bills, and it was also reflected in the bond markets, the yields were on a downward spiral. Now, people who invest money, why do they invest? They invest for capital preservation, but they also invest for capital appreciation. And once they saw that their capital was not appreciating when they invested in, in um, their fixed income instruments, their treasury bills and bonds, and their fixed deposits, and fixed deposits are affected by the treasury bills because they use it as a benchmark. So if the treasury bill rate is high, then the fixed deposit rates will be high. But if the treasury bill rate is low, then the fixed deposit rates are also going to be low. They mirror each other. So once the investors have seen, had seen that there isn't a lot of value here in this fixed income market, they decided to move their money elsewhere where they were more likely to get good returns. And that is a strong reason why the equity market performed so powerfully last year because money was flooded into it. You know, people were looking for wherever they could find value. And as money went into the equity market, despite the economic downturn, because there was high demand for those stocks, it pushed prices up. Now, coming into 2021, the central bank and the uh, debt management office together had started raising the yields on treasury bills. You know, as a point last year, treasury bills yields for the 360 day, 364 day mm -hmm. bill was below 2%. You know, that's immeasurably, immeasurably low. But they started gradually rising, uh, raising the stop rates at the auctions to the point where I think in April and another auction in May, it hit a high of 9.75%. And investors looking at that were seeing a market in which they were mo a lot more comfortable. And because treasury bills are considered to be a risk-free investment, a lot of people were taking their money from the equity market to the treasury bills market. They were seeing a place where they could put their money and not have to worry about the volatility that comes with investments in the equity market. So, as money moved from the equity market to the fixed income markets, the all share index trended downward for a majority of the year. You know. Now that has started to change a little bit. The ASI, it hit its lowest point. That's the all share index. It, yeah. it hit its lowest point at the end of June at about 37,600 index points for the year, where it started at 41,100 about there. And from the end of June till, till now, it's gained upwards of 1,800 index points. So we are seeing a, uh, a bit of an upward trend in the equity markets. And we can also mirror that again against what has been happening in the fixed income markets. Mm. In the fixed income markets, since the end of May, the stop rates for the 364-day bill have started coming down again. So they hit their high of 9.75%, and in auctions following, it has been steadily dropping. As of the auction that was conducted last week, um, the stop rate for the 364-day bill was now at 7.3%. Now, investors are not, um, they're not idle people. Mm. When you have money somewhere, you're going to be looking to see what it's doing and looking to see all the factors that mm. are affecting it. So and you'll be running to and fro. So, I mean, even if you're not running to and fro, you are at least keeping your eye I, yes. on, on, That's what on I the mean. different yes. things. Where exactly do I yes. get? So I returns. think investors would have seen what happened between 2019 to 2020, where rates crashed and money moved to the equity market, and that's where value was gained. Okay. And they are probably seeing that as something that may be happening right now, and they will be looking to move their money into the equity market. So the equity market has been trending upward for the last, let's say, month and a half. Okay, let's talk about sex approval for structured funds, okay. which where you all guys also play in. I like okay. uh, that you've given us that background, yes. at least for our uh, audience and our viewers to understand the journey and perhaps why you should be interested in, you know, these things that perhaps I talk about on a daily basis, if you're a very savvy investor. If you're not even a savvy investor, you have money. Look for where to put it that will make <laughs> more money. <laughs> you know. So let's talk about sex approval 
uh, for structured funds and how you guys play. For those that are watching right now and are interested, I said, okay, fine. What can UK do and do for me? I have, you know, so so amount of money placed somewhere. What can I do? How do you guys okay. come in? So the advice is really for whether you're a seasoned investor or you are new to the investment space, really, it's applicable to everyone. Now, um, the equities market is regulated by SEC, but SEC also regulates fund and portfolio managers and asset managers, which we are, right? And rec recently, a little, a few months ago, they approved investments for unstructured funds, which basically means they asked all asset managers and fund and portfolio managers to come to them and register all their products that didn't fall under their general categories, right? Now, this is very important. Why? Because one, they want to, you know, reduce the proliferation of Ponzi schemes mm -hmm. in, in the investment markets, mm -hmm. you know, and they want to be able to keep a good eye on the investment activities of the people that they say that they are regulating, you know. Now, this is, is a good thing for investors. It's a good thing for investors to know that wherever you're putting your money, as long as that company is definitely, you know, an asset management company in, or under the umbrella that SEC um, regulates, regulates, then your money is in a safe place because the highest body in the, in, in the, in the country is keeping an eye on their activities. Now, these unstructured funds are basically kind of different aggregations of different investment products, you know, where if you as an indi individual investor, you don't know what to do with your money, and that is not an uncommon, it's not an uncommon situation because investing in anything, it usually takes expertise. You don't want to go into it on your own and then, you know, make a misstep and you end up losing maybe not even all of your money, but at least a portion of it. So a good thing to do is to invest with professional portfolio managers. And these professional portfolio managers, they offer some things that are called unstructured funds. You know, they are internal products that they have designed to provide you with value. And some of these unstructured funds have guaranteed returns for different tenors that you may be investing your money. That's different yes. time limits. So different time yeah. limits. If you bring your money for three, six, nine you know, months, nine months year, 12 months, you know. That. So the, the, the products are, you know, specific to whichever company. They will have designed what they want to do and they will be taking your money and then putting it in these high yielding investments, securing your capital, and then also actively monitoring these portfolios to find out wherever there is value to give you good return. And this is what we do at, at UK Dion. You know, we are professional fund and portfolio managers, and we invest our clients' money in very lucrative deals, but you know, we are happy to have everyone mm. to come to us. So I guess that you can contact them. <laughs> you yes, know, so in case you can. It also depends on your risk appetite. Yes. And how so much money you have. Because for those that want to invest, you know, different risk appetite. For someone like in the university, for example, mm -hmm. uh, that you're out of university, you just got a job, uh, you want to start investing, you don't want to like wait until retirement and it dawns on you. You're also different from someone that wants to retire like in five years yes. or in 10 years. So I guess... Those are the kind of things that you guys look at yes, and so, advice. Yeah, so, so investment is a habit, really, that mm. you have to build. Mm. And there's no better time to build it than right now. Mm. You know, so there is no person who is too young or, or too, too old, old to invest. And like you said... So as parents, I can, as parents, parents can begin to invest for their children. They can invest for their children, be it whether they are children who have been born or children that they plan to have in the future. Mm. You know, and then different investment products have different entry requirements, different amounts that they will require you to bring. So the market is there for every and everyone, for any and everyone to come into it. You know, and we are UK Dion. We we look at our clients, we look at their risk appetite, we look at their investment goals, what they want to achieve, how they want to achieve it, and then we guide them to whatever we feel is most appropriate for each each individual to help them achieve their goals, to help them add value. And that's what we do. We simply add value.
You simply add value. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a look at, for those that are perhaps watching and they want to get across to you, not me or them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, um, you can contact us on our customer service line, 0809-111-5748 or 0809-111-5768. You can visit our website, ukdioninvestment.com. Uh, you can email us at info at ukdion.com. You can check out our Instagram, ukdion, sorry, uk underscore dion. You know, so any of these platforms, you can reach out to us and we will be happy to take you on, happy to speak to you and just happy to add value to whatever you think you can bring and whatever you need. We are here to help you achieve your goals. So, Kenny, let's use the next few minutes just before we round up okay. to talk about the importance of getting licensed uh, portfolio managers, okay. licensed fund managers, licensed and regulated by SEC. Yes. Uh, you know, the importance of those kind of people handling your money. And why I'm saying so, because we've seen the proliferation of, like you said, Ponzi schemes, pyramid schemes, taking different coloration, Yes. you know, until you get that bubble bust. I don't know why it doesn't. People don't come to me with those kind of things. Okay, let's invest because they don't want to ask questions. So after, it's later after, when it busts that are we here, that there's like seen, a scheme. After they've seen how knowledgeable you are, they know that you are not the one that they will come you know, and play that with I'm not like one that. of the, those, those customers, you know. But what I'm saying in essence, like the, the pyramid scheme, the Ponzi schemes, the MMM guys that yes. have transformed into other things that I'm hearing, you know. Someone told me that she invested 20 million naira in something that they say you should buy land. And I was like, and you're telling me now, why didn't you, you know? So people are, you know, still doing those kind of investment. How mm. important is it that mm. people have knowledge and people or investors come to guys like you and regulated, especially by SEC, not saying that the, the company has a CSC certificate because I see that, Yes. you know? How important so is it's, it? It's, it's, it is extremely important, you know. Nobody knows more than any individual how hard they worked to get the money mm. that they are putting anywhere. So they don't want to lose out, right? Now, everybody is looking for value somewhere, but there are some really easy, simple steps that you can do or you can take where you are considering investing and you want to know like whether your money is going to be safe with who you're giving it to. So if any company claims to be an asset manager, you can easily find them in the Fund Managers Association of Nigeria website. Their details must be there. So every, every, every company that's registered you know, as a fund and a portfolio manager will appear on the FMAN website. The FMAN website, they are the society that collates mm -hmm. all companies that come under this umbrella. So your first check, check on the FMAN website. Check us, check us on the FMAN website, so we're we are, we are there. Mm. <laughs> so if they are not there, you already know that you have to rule them out. Now, secondly, um, SEC is very, very, they are very strict in how they permit people to invest money. You know, hence, you know, this unstructured funds mm -hmm. approval that they released because they want to be able to keep track of everyone under their umbrella and ensure that their activities are in line with in, with investors goals in line with what is ac what is acceptable practice within the industry that does not cause people to take undue risk you know they understand as we all understand that it takes a lot of work to make money and then to put it somewhere and once you put it somewhere you want to believe that you're putting it with people who you can trust right and sex 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 whole mantra is protection you know they want to make sure that everyone is as safe as possible and they want to make sure that the people you, you are giving your money to are doing the best that mm -hmm. they can with it in within legal means you know so it's extremely important that we you know that individuals that in, as investors they look and be a bit more conscious themselves, mm. you know. Don't fall, I, if something appears too good to be true, ask it questions. often is, and always ask questions. Always ask questions. Google is your friend as well. Yeah. F-Man is your friend, SEC mm. is your friend. You can walk into any SEC office. I'm not uh, marketing SEC, but they, of course, it's a regulator, so I should also say what mm -hmm. they're doing. Yes. You can go into any office of SEC to find out. Yes. You know, I'm not just saying, 
uh, the company has, they showed me a CSC certificate so they can take my money. That's not it. I think we should beware. And a lot of Nigerians are falling prey. To these, to yes, these schemes, to yes, this, they are. It's, to this. It's quite uh, is, there, is there like an amount limit that one can use if you want to invest? Is there like an amount limit? So there is no upper, yes. there is no upper limit mm. for any of our investments. But depending on the investment product, there may be a lower limit. A lower limit. But then those limits are, they are, so they have different caters mm. to attend to the needs of different investment mm. clients. So really, everyone and anyone is welcome. You know why I asked that question? Because there's also a savings bond, FGN savings bond, yes. that is always on every month, beginning mm -hmm. of the month. The least amount is 5,000 naira. So don't say that you did not hear, or you start your investment now. Not say until I get to 40. <laughs> 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 just before we go, so can you just yes. run through your numbers again or how they contact you very quickly? Okay, yes. So for UK Dion, please visit our website, UKDioninvestment.com. Um, call us on our number 0809-111-5748 or 0809-111-5768. You can also email us info at UKDion.com. You can visit our Instagram page as well, UK underscore Dion. Thank you very much, Sum Kenny. Thank you for having me, Nancy. Uh, all right, I've been speaking with Sum Kenny Jipreze. He's the uh, fund manager at UK Dion Investment Limited. This is our own corporate social responsibility too, in terms of financial education, financial investment information, so that you all are more knowledgeable, especially around the investment space. I am Nancy Naji. Be the best you can be. And be the change that you want to see. Catch us tomorrow, same time, on this channel. Bye now.